Today on The Report, we're covering another huge key to winning games, building the best team composition. That's right. The more you know about the origins and classes, the better able you'll be to take advantage of their strengths and mitigate their weaknesses. This is Team Fight Tactical Report. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the second ever podcast episode of Team Fight Tactical Report, this time with video. Hi, my name is Jimmy Wong. How's it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. Now, we've been playing a lot of this game, and winning is something that is the elusive thing that we're always looking for, and it's never a walk in the park. Now, our first episode, we talked about gold economy and how important it is to save your gold and also manage it correctly so that you have more options and freedom. And now we're actually going to talk about the other part of that, which is how do you spend your gold in a way to build the best team comp? And that's what we're going to do. Maximize your chances of winning and make some team compositions that are just going to crush the end game. Yeah, it was really great to hear from all of you after our first episode. We, oh, yeah. we heard from a lot of people who were like, I was losing. I listened to your episode. I just won my first game. That warms our hearts. So yeah, hopefully, that's what we're here for. Yeah, hopefully this can help you win even more or maybe... You know, those people who weren't quite getting to first place, maybe getting up there in second and third, it's mm -hmm. going to push you over. Over the edge. Yeah, exactly. And get some wins under your belt. Um, quick disclaimer, Riot's has been and is going to be patching and changing this game mod a lot. We would expect that to happen. Um, it's actually good that it's happening. It keeps the meta fresh. But it also means that this podcast, this show, is... you on know the razor's edge of being not correct sometimes and very correct other times, depending on the patch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think you know we're going to talk about team compositions and those strategies in a way that will still be relevant after some tweaks and changes get made because mm -hmm. they're normally like changing numbers, percentages, things yeah. like that. And a lot of our strategical talk will be about things that aren't going to change, just in general how certain comps work yep. and how you want to build them, what types of units you want. But, you know, a certain unit may get buffed and another one may get nerfed, and that could change what we think is the best at any given time. These are the ones we like right now. Yeah. So... That, okay, disclaimer, there you go. <laughs> but if you want to make sure you're kept up on all of the updates, follow us on Twitter at TF Tactical, and there we'll be like, hey, this just happened in this patch. This actually affects what we talked about in the last week on the episode. But Josh is right. In general, we're going to be talking more broadly about strategies and why they work, and you can usually apply these things to, uh, to other compositions and other ideas and learn a lot from it. Yeah, definitely give us a follow on Twitter. We've got a number of people here at the office who are just aggregating all the information. So if patches or changes or sometimes mm -hmm. on the PVE, they'll be changing some things. So we know that's coming down the pipe and we'll be talking about yeah. things like that. So at TF Tactical. Also, we're not going to go super deep on items this episode. It's, it is a huge part of the game and we kind of think that those are going to be their own episodes or, or another episode. It's just this would be two hours long if we decided to go into item yeah. combos and stuff. So You could do an entire episode on the rapid fire cannon, by the That's way. That's true. Or the spear of Sojin. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, oh, one last thing before oh, yes. we get in. And this is, you know, you're already like, oh, get on with the podcast. But we're giving away RP. That's right. It's Riot Points. It's the way that you buy things like skins and other alterations in the game cosmetics. We're giving away $35, aka 5,000 RP. That's allowed. That's going to allow you to buy 10 of the eggs to get the little, little legend skins by the way how many have you bought already uh, I bought 11, I bought 11. <laughs> well it gets you it gets you 10 plus one right. so if you want to win that giveaway it's going to be very simple it's going to be involving uh, you writing a review for us on the podcast app and also listening to the end of the episode about how to enter yeah all right. at, at the end we'll cover all that stuff all right we're through page one let's get this out of here okay so <laughs> we're going to talk about four of our favorite team comps what we think are the best for mm -hmm. right now uh the first one is the best, by the way, I think, by a long shot. I actually, we'll, we'll have to debate that. Okay. I think it's very good, but I actually have another one that's my favorite. Um, It's Imperial Blade Master Draven, really. It's the Draven. It's comp. the Draven comp. Draven's been here. He got nerfed, but it wasn't enough because of Blade Master uh, and Imperial, actually, because of all of them. So let's talk about <laughs> the keys to the comp. Uh, big caveat, this is one of the hardest comps to also make and roll into. That's I think you have to factor that into what's the best, right? Is True. how likely am I to complete it, to get it? Because uh, yeah. everybody does like Draven. So let's talk <laughs> about the buffs really quickly. So Imperial is, if you have two Imperial units, then the buff you get is one random Imperial deals double damage for that battle. If you have four Imperial units, then, and there's only four in the game, so you have to have all, at least all one of each of them. Of them. 
then all your Imperials, Imperials deal double damage. That's a big deal. That scales with I mean, everything insanity. in the game. 200%, that's a lot of damage. Yeah. The Imperials in the game are Darius at level 1, or I guess tier 1, uh, Katarina at 3, Draven at 4, and Swain at 5. So that right there, Draven and Swain are 4 and 5 costs. They are actually very hard to roll, and getting both, well, good luck. There's games where you just won't see a Swain. Yeah. Like, that just happens sometimes. There's games where I don't even see Draven. Yeah, I mean, usually later on in the game, but it might be too late. You're going to... You, the you're, four you're drops going you get another to way. see, yeah. yeah. Um, now, Blade Master, which is the second part of, of this comp, is a buff that says Blade Masters have a 35% chance to strike an additional time um, each attack. So, the Blade Master buff is when you have three Blade Masters and when you have six. When mm -hmm. you have three, they'll strike one additional time. When you have six they'll strike two additional times. Again, they have a 35% chance to do that. But uh, that's another thing that just adds a yeah. colossal amount of damage. So if you have all four of the Imperials and the Blade Master procs one in every three times, you're going to strike two additional times, and each of those additional times is going to do double damage. So you're going to be doing 600% damage uh, one-third of the time with your characters. Right. That's for the ones that are Blade Master and Imperial, and right? Imperial, So yes. that'd be like Draven. Just Draven, which is why this is called the Imperial Blade Master Draven comp. He is going to be carrying your team. Well, and this is a very important sort of concept that I think is important to all team comps is this idea of what your hinge unit is for mm -hmm. that comp. So we're going to talk about some other comps, and and generally there's one unit that's very important to the comp, and it's not always the carry for that comp, although in this case it is. Yeah. But it's often the character that has the origin and the class, or both origins or both classes or whatever it is that you're going for. So Draven is an Imperial and a Blade Master, and that's the hinge that all the other units sort of hinge on yeah I guess. yeah the hinge is a great way to look at it it's the thing that if you put it in the middle everything else is kind of rotating around it you are sometimes allowed a little freedom uh for instance like assassins that are seven total but you only need six for the buff so you can choose one to not put in there uh but for the most part yeah that is the main thing because again it's in both the origin and the class uh so keys to making this comp work um if you see a katarina they're usually very very weak level one until you get them to level two so building it on your bench is going to be something that you want to do but you're also going to need to make sure you have a really buff darius darius is the first and most important key to this to this comp. Because if you don't have Darius, the rest of the comp basically falls off. And Darius is a one-cost unit, but he's also in very high demand. And Darius kind of doubles as your tank in this unit until yeah. maybe until you get the Blade Masters really going, which will probably happen a little bit later. Yeah. So so Darius early is super, super important. And then Draven late. I like the Katarina thing, building it on your bench. Honestly, if you don't do that, the comp will still can work with just Darius and Draven as sort of mm -hmm. your two um, Imperial units to get at least part of that buff. You're still going to want to go for four eventually later to be the really super powered version, yeah. but you... you you know, you don't always get there. Well, here's the thing. Every time you do two, you have a 50% chance Draven won't get the buff. Right. And if one he's going to be your hyper carry, that's going to be really rough for you. One thing I like to do if I'm stuck there, and that ha it happens, right? Sometimes you just don't see a Swain yeah. or whatever, is you can actually build two two-star da Dravens. And then if, if you have a Dra... Now, the set what you want again that's kind of a backup plan in the bad <laughs> and one of them might, one of them might be a level one with no items too Who well knows? yeah i wouldn't <laughs> run out of level one probably it's yeah. probably you know because you're going to try and build towards level three draven anyway yeah um okay so yeah build cat on the bench is a big help just so that you when you see the swain you grab it you put in the cat and, and the boom, swain and then all, all of a sudden yeah huge power spike at that moment when you do that you're gonna win like the next four or five fights before somebody catches up probably like yeah 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 um swain is really hard to hit generally you have the best percentage chance of doing it at the highest level pre one of the highest levels so level eight or you can try and luck out and get him on the carousel but usually he is the first pick if not the second pick so it's very hard to get him usually yeah you you gotta you gotta be lucky about your positioning and on the draft yeah. and on the carousel itself to get swing because people but want him. Good gold management means you're going to be able to get to level eight before everyone else usually. So in that way, you're also able to roll out more freely and try and find him. Let's talk about the blade master portion of this comp. So the blade masters, you want to start preparing to get out there with Draven. Shen is the mm -hmm. two drop. Uh, Aatrox, who have actually found to be a little underrated. I I find that character at, at two star is quite good. The moment he ults, you know he's good. Yeah, that thing hurts. Fiora is pretty bad and is a blade master. I don't want Fiora in this comp for me if I can help it, yeah. but she can fill in if you have to. And sometimes I'll just build that that two star Fiora on my bench just in case I don't get the Shen or the Aatrox to come through. Right. 
and they are hard to come through again. Fiora is usually the least wanted unit by, well, pretty much everyone in the game right now. So you, you can be able to find her pretty easily. Yeah, so she's good to have as just a two-star that's sitting there. And like, if I get the if I get you know Draven going and I just need one extra Blade Master, I can throw Fiora in there for the yeah. buff. And, and that can be worth it. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the strengths of the comp and then the weaknesses as well. The main strength is you have a ton of damage. Your damage oh, output yeah. is just insane between uh, Draven and Swain, if you get Swain out there. But even Draven Darius can do a lot of damage. And the nice thing is that those... Oh, the Blade Masters hit hard, too. Yeah, they all do. And, and they have a lot of utility, which is great. Um, and the, the big thing about the Imperial thing between Draven and uh, Darius is that you can just take those two and move them into any comp. And they'll still have the Imperial buff. You're, there's a good chance your Draven will still get the massive buff from Imperial and do a ton of damage. So at the very least, building those two is going to give you a really solid base for damage. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll move a Darius Draven into di way a lot of different comps. Like maybe I'm doing Noble and I'll just yeah. happen to throw those two in there. So I really like building a comp based on those two because your options are, are very wide open. Yep. Yeah, that's really good. Um, Blade Master procs allow Draven to one-shot squishy units. Yeah, that's just, funny. Boom, boom, attack twice. It's just, or three times. Like, yeah, he just, has blades. He just tosses them back there, and you just hear the very satisfying ding sounds. <laughs> you just watch a level one just get wiped off the planet. Very nice. Uh, the weakness is, is that, the, again, this is very heavily reliant on Draven, and I think everyone in general, even after the nerfs, is he, he's a good character. Everyone knows that very he's strong. very strong. Yeah. yeah. So when he dies, the fight's over. If they're very assassin heavy and there's no way you can protect him in your back line, it's going to be rough for you. Uh, another weakness of the comp is that Swain is... Just you may never see this one. You may never be able to grab it on the carousel, and it's yeah. possible through the draft portion. Even if you reroll a bunch of times, you just don't always see every five drop uh, champ in a game. Yeah. Like how often have you gone through a game and you just don't see a kale, or you just oh. don't like you just never see one. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, especially if you're behind. Um, yeah. Glacial is uh, pretty rough against this comp too, because how are you going to hurt people if you're frozen in place? So Sejuani and Ash arrows from far away can actually put a huge damper in your damage output. And you're not super tanky. You're not beefy in general. Like yeah. you have a Darius or maybe a you know like a Shen, but everybody else will just drop pretty fast. Yeah, and Dragon Claw is another item that I found to grow in importance over and over. It's it gives you a ton of magic resist made with two uh, cloaks, two Negatrons. Yeah. Two Negatrons. Yeah. Sometimes you just can't find both of those and then uh, a really powerful sorcerer comp will come along and then Karthus plus a soul or something will just burst you down yeah just yeah. a big pop so, still it's super super strong because just, oftentimes you kill them before they even get to be able to do any of that yeah I mean how many games have you had where you're like Draven just at the end is just like kill that kill that kill that win the battle yeah because they're all trying to kill something else yeah. over there <laughs> Kindred's just like dancing around and Draven's just like sweet here we go yeah it, it is very very strong um, the second comp we want to talk about as our best comps right now are is glacial elemental. This is much more reasonable to get, by the way. And elementals specifically are one of my favorites. I, I like yeah. this. I like I like any comp with elementals in it. You get a free unit on the board, right? A free tank. Free tank. So important. one of the most important things early in every game is, um, no matter what comp, I'm always trying to build a tank, right? Right. Almost every comp wants a tank. There's a couple that don't, but this gives you a lot of. Um, versatility because if you go elementals you're gonna get a tank yeah and elementalist the the buff is there are four elementals in the game but you only need three and elementalist summon an elemental you'll see this thing it jumps out of the, the it's almost like it's a rock monster it's a rock monster that yeah, has a bajillion hit points yeah it's absurd <laughs> it doesn't uh, so, hit very hard but it could take a punch so the elementalist we have are lissandra at two kenan at three brand at four and anivia at five so you don't even need to have that five unit to do it you just need a two three and a four notably two of these units are also glacial so let's talk about the glacial uh the glacial class here glacial on hit glacials have a chance to stun for two seconds if you have two glacials on the board, you have a 20% chance to do that. If you have four, you have a 30% chance to do it. And if you have six, you have a 45% chance to do that. If you have six, you're going to perma-stun them pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, if you have glacial four damage is not speed, super high. you might do it too. Yeah. But all, even just two, like an ash can just perma-lock something sometimes. Yeah. Uh, especially with some sort of attack speed buff. Because if you just happen to proc on the 20% and then proc again while they're stunned, it'll stack up. Yeah. And then you're just never, that character's not coming out. They're going to get stunned again before they come out. Yeah, and you have two seconds of invulnerability from that character, especially. So it does help. This is one of those buffs that basically helps itself out, giving you more chances to proc because you've stunned them. We should say that um, Twisted Fate is incoming. That's right. It's a pirate sorcerer. Yeah. Sorcerer is often something you will pair with this comp as well, which is why we wanted to put it there. Um, okay, so Glacial Elemental, 
keys to the comp. Lissandra is kind of your hinge unit early, and that's the one thing I don't like about this comp because yeah. Lissandra is a pretty weak unit. Oh, she's butt. <laughs> and so having Lissandra be important to your comp early is bad because you have to have Lissandras. You're but wasting a space on it. Yeah. And it's a two-cost unit, so holding them on your bench also can punish you. But the good part is that nobody wants Lissandras. So, <laughs> yeah, you see them all the time. So you could get them. Yeah. Uh, so that part's good. And then Brand Late is your hinge, is sort of your hinge unit because yeah. Brand is your Draven in this build, kind of the... the well, I well, guess Kennen Brand... Ken can also fill in that role. Either right. one. Well, actually, the nice thing about Glacial is that, again, you're given time to do stuff because you're freezing units, so a lot of your higher damage but slower to generate mana units can actually come through in a, lot, in a bigger way, yeah. especially if they're all frozen and Kennen just sits there and just shakes. Uh, Kennen can be amazing. Can can be your hyper carry easily. Mm -hmm. Spear Sojin or Morello, Morello's on. Morello's Kennen can on him, just yeah. drop the entire team. Um one, one nice thing about Lissandra, though, is that it does. it's also a Glacial, so at right. least you're, you're getting the hinge early. Now... One thing I really like about this comp, and we touched on it, is that you're going to get the rock monster later. And so when I play it, I don't actually have to worry about putting a bunch of resources into building a tank. Oh, right. So you don't need that Darius, Garen, Kassadin, Mordekaiser if you're really hurting for it. Um, <laughs> but but most comps, they're like, I need a tank. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to put some resources into a tank. I'm going to have to tank, take tanky uh, units or, or champs that I can possibly build into. And this, this comp do is like... Do I need like, to buy items for them? Yeah. I, not buy them. Do I need to put items on them? Yeah. yeah I've, I've had this problem a lot of times. This comp is like, oh, I'm going to get the rock monster. So I'm just going to concentrate on the other parts. Yeah. And then the rock monster will, f you know, fill in that tank role later. Yeah. And the nice thing about this as well is that you're not necessarily trying to go for six glacial in the way that you'd go for four imperial. Yeah. In fact, I would say a lot of the times four glacial is, is enough. Even two sometimes. I mean, if you've... Again, yeah, attack speed makes a big, big difference yeah. there. But if you do go two, well, fortunately, you have a lot of other buffs that help out. Rangers, specifically with Ash, uh, basically allows her to attack faster occasionally, uh, is very, very strong. So you want to keep those options open as you're building it out. Um, so there's Rangers and Sorcerers that I think work really well with this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I would say the Sorcerer options, again, because you're freezing people, you have a lot more freedom to do a lot of damage. So Aurelian Soul, I think, and Morgana, and Ke because it, Morgana's a very similar effect to Kennen, those rise up very high in power level now with a Glacial build. Yeah, Morgana can sort of fill in for your Kennen if you don't have like a, a two-star Kennen or weren't, mm -hmm. weren't able to build one and be sort of your... Once we, stuff is frozen, Morgana punishes that, right? Yeah, Kennen and Twisted Fate that. might be a big part of that too because one of his attacks restores mana, oh, right. which is super important for this build. So yeah, very interesting. The Elementalist gained a ton of mana from just attacking. And if you are able to, to pile on some extra sorcerers and get that sorcerer buff, you're going to be able to doing a ton of damage. All right, let's talk about the strengths of the comp. We already talked about the fact that you don't need to spend a bunch of resources on a tank mm -hmm. because you're going to have that in the rock monster. Uh, plays well with other meta comps. You know, it gives you a lot of options. We just laid out sorcerers. You can go... You rangers. Know, rangers, yeah. That's a couple of different ways so that you've got, instead of like a, a four and a three buff, you've got two, three, two, two, mm -hmm. you know, with, with other things. And that that's always welcome because the draft isn't always going to go your way. Somebody else is going to be in the comp you want to be. Somebody else is going glacial, and mm -hmm. you're like, crap, that's kind of drying up. What else can I pivot into here that'll fill out the rest of my comp and still give me a chance in this game? Yeah, so again, having multiple build paths, imagine if it's like a tree of decisions to the end game. If you're able to always make sure you have three or four branches available and not just one, you're always going to be able to play around what other people are drafting. So that's just something to always keep in mind. Uh, we have written down that a kitted out brand, oh, yeah. meaning a brand that you just stack a bunch of items on, can kill their entire team with multiple fireballs bouncing around. I've, I've been able to pull that off where there's more than one fireball. Oh, yeah, where he just keeps going over and over again. <laughs> you see two of them bouncing, and de they're just all dead. Like yeah. they're, they're not living through it. Yeah, it's a fireworks show. Happy Fourth of July. Oh, hey, man. Bad thing. Uh, weaknesses. Lissandra. You gotta build around Lissandra in the beginning. Uh, and here's the thing. She does, you know, at least give you the, the freezing thing if she doesn't drop below 50%. Yeah, that's the worst! Why doesn't she... <laughs> it's like, Lissandra, yes, you're going to die, but take one for the team and still hit the enemy and with yeah, your no, thing. Yeah, everyone else does it. It's yeah. just you that decides to turn it inwards. You're like, no, I'm gonna save myself for two seconds and then I'll die afterwards. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, this is a squishy comp because you're gonna be playing a lot of, you know, the elementalists they may be elementals, but they're not necessarily buff unless they're canon. Uh, so yeah, if assassins can be a very good counter pick for this early on. So these are just yeah. things you need to worry about. Um, elementalist too, you need to get Daisy out as soon as possible. 
Otherwise, you're just going to be losing so many matches to not having a tank and getting your lines obliterated. So that, that these are just a couple of the weaknesses that I've seen. They're actually kind of low on damage minus brand, unless you get one of those great item com combos with yeah. cannon. Because cannon without items is not like a ton He's of damage. Amazing, yeah. yeah, so brand is really your damage, and and so you can be in trouble if either you can't two-star your brand or you don't see any or you just get brand too late and now you're too far behind in the game. And I've just taken brand myself just to have a brand on my team. Mm -hmm. You know, if I have some mana, I, even if it's not really synergizing, the character is very strong. So I think it's pretty in demand in this current meta. Also, there's no one drop, one tier elementalist. Right. So that I think hurts the comp a little bit, makes it tougher because everything you want, A, costs more gold and is, you're not going to find it till a little bit later. Yeah. And again, so, holding these units on your bench when they cost more is can be really painful to getting the the economy going. Yeah, because you can't. You're more reticent to sell them because to get up to your interest rate that 20, we talked about. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah, I find that like sometimes you'll see like a pretty good three drop unit early, but it's really dangerous to take it. It's like oh, it's, you know, it's Cho'Gath or something. Yeah. But if I take Cho'Gath now, I. He's chose not a four, that, but yeah. Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen Cho very early, too. You're just like, what? Yeah, but it's <laughs> like, oh, if I take it, I'm going to be at 12 gold. I don't really want to put it out there because it's not two-star. Yeah. And then what am I going to do? Hold it and not get any interest for that, that gold I'm spending? Yeah, it's, it's a tough thing you got to think about. Um, all right, let's move on to the our third favorite, third best team comp. <laughs> it's Wild Shapeshifter. Rar. This is one of my favorites early on. I think I won a ton of games early with Noble, and then I went through this phase where I was just... I was like, wow, Shape Shapeshifter is the best. And it's I was just best. forcing it every time and winning like 80%. It was crazy. How can they stop when Wild <laughs> allows your attacks to generate stacks of Fury up to five times? And each stack of Fury grants 7% attack speed. So you can get 35% attack speed off of this. If you have two Wilds, it's Wild Allies only. However, if you have four Wilds, every single ally gets this buff. It's not just the wild allies. That's what's insanity. That's one of the best current, as it stands in this in this version of the game. So you got Nidalee and Warwick both at one. Ari is at two, Rengar at three, and Nar at four. Each of these champions is very powerful, I think. They're all above, uh, I think, average. Yeah, I think all of them are good. And your two hinge units are Nidalee and Nar. And they they're are both, both wild and shapeshifter. Amazing. And they're both awesome. They're both among the best at their slot mm -hmm. right nidalee is one of the best one drop champs and nar is one of the best four yeah so i think that's one of the big strengths of the comp shapeshifter is the other thing we like to pair it with here and that buff is shapeshifters gain bonus maximum health when they transform and if you you need three shapeshifters to turn this on there's no yeah, there's no first tier, second tier. There's, there's just only one, one tier. tier yeah. And what it is is 100% bonus max health when they transform. So they become massive, essentially. I've seen NARS with, you know, health bars that literally I can't yeah. even see the divots anymore. There are so many. Um, so again, Nidalee is at one. And Elise <laughs> is also a shapeshifter. And it's at two, but in the new patch, it's going down to one. Okay. That's, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, we also have Shivana at three, NAR at four, and Swain at five. S Swain, just... Sure, why not? You're a shapeshifter. Swain, Love it. Swain's one of the few that has three yeah. uh, origins and classes combined. So that's one of the reasons Swain is so great. Fits into so many comps. Yeah, so Nidalee early and Nar late. Both of these are very strong. Nidalee with the heal bonus as well on her ultimate is very, very, very powerful. It can definitely carry you through a lot of the early rounds. And The, the combo of Warwick and Nidalee, both one drops and pretty easy to yeah. two-star, that that will definitely carry you like mid game. Like just those two units paired with almost anything is pretty strong and will make you competitive through the mid game. Yeah, and you're able to two star units like Nidalee and Warwick really easily too because yeah. they're both at level one. And if no one else is going that way, you can actually do a little bit of a re roll earlier on to try and nail those in. So Shivana, uh, card or not card, the champion I definitely underrated at first. Very powerful. The, her transform and the damage she does when afterwards is actually can be hugely impactful in games. I think this is going to become even more important with the Elise change because now you might have three shapeshifters and you're not waiting on Nar. Because up right. till now, it's been basically like Shivan is your second shapeshifter and you got to wait for Nar. Sometimes even to put her out because she's just going to die so fast. Yeah, yeah. So this might make Shivana even better now. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, if you're playing Shivana, you actually get to play Aurelian Soul as well because it gives you the double dragon buff, which makes him immune to magic damage. So a Shivana 
all of a sudden has basically what amounts to a free claw of the dragon on her. Yep. Uh, which is pretty powerful. Very powerful. And I like the fact that because Nidalee and Nar are both wild and shapeshifter, you can get both buffs sometimes mm -hmm. with only four characters out, which leaves that fifth slot yeah. that you can now you know, at level five, put Aurelian Soul in and not be like losing one of your buffs. Because there's a lot of times you're like, ooh, I'd like the secondary buff of like dragons or or brawler or yeah, yeah. knight or something. Brawler's Just, great in this buff Yeah, too. but I can't fit the slot. But because there's two hinge units at fairly low, you know, Nars of four, but still mm -hmm. you can get that there with, you know, it basically gives you almost like an extra unit that you're allowed to have on the battlefield kind of. Yeah, I mean, once they transform, they take on a whole nother life, and I've seen Naraltis could just completely change the course of a game. So, oh, one thing we noted here is that positioning is pretty important for wild shapeshifters more than a lot of comps because yeah. you, you can't just throw them in front. <laughs> you need your Nidalee, your Shivana, and your Nars to live long enough to transform because that's when their true power is unlocked. And so, you need to really think about where you're position positioning your forces so they live long enough for that to happen because. Your comp is way different mm -hmm. and way worse if they, especially if like Nar gets dropped early. Sometimes that's just game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not only that, but like, you know, if you don't have them transform, and if they transform in the low life total, just a good point. Then yeah. they're transforming at a low life total as well. And then, then the ultimate ability that they're going to get to is going to get squashed because they'll die too fast. So you really need to make sure they're protected and have the ability to still hit enemies, but also at the same time receive some damage because that increases their mana as well. Yeah. So that's one of the keys to the comp. Okay. Let's talk about some of the strengths of the comp. It easily beats magic-based comps and comps that need time sort of to ramp up. A big part of this is that Aurelian Soul, Shivana thing. Mm -hmm. You can... I like to always, when I'm in Shapeshifters, grab an Aurelian Soul and just have it there. And I'm always checking my opponent's comps. To see what they're building. To see what they're building. If there's like, you know, if we get down to like four players and there's a sorcerer and a, you know, yeah, whatever, then I'm way dealers. more likely to put it in because my percentage chance of running into one of them is high. Yeah, and Shivana is just going to live through it as well as Asol. That's going to yeah. blast them as well for a ton of damage. Also, if they're in sorcerers, you're taking a sorcerer away that they want. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason I really like Aurelian Soul being part of the comp is because I'm not only helping myself against sorcerers, I'm hurting the sorcerers by taking yeah. one of their, you know, one of their champs they want. Yeah. And your, you know, Rolling Soul is just immune to them now. Yep. Uh, wild Synergy is very good in general. Uh, I, I've, I've taken four wilds all the way to the end game without any of the other shapeshifter synergies that we're talking about here. So it's something that you can actually bring with you. I've, I found that Nidalee doesn't fall off as quickly as some of the other tier one units. So you can keep these units around and, and pivot out of it if you're not seeing that the correct pieces come up as well. I mean, I've definitely seen games where uh, a stacked Nidalee is the, is the carry for the team, yeah. even all the way to the end. Yeah, You totally. know, to the late game. Uh, the Dragon buff... <laughs> On this Shivana, she is so hard to deal with when she transforms um, because she jumps away from everyone and just starts essentially acting like a rapid fire a soul, just blasting people with like little fireballs. If um, you're gonna do the dragon buff, I think if you can get a phantom dancer on Shivana, oh, she's, she's nearly unkillable. unkillable at that point because yeah. she can't take critical hits and then can't take magic damage mm -hmm. and it's just like well how do you kill her then <laughs> yeah yeah this comp has a lot of the, the parts of what i like in good comps which is it's got healing uh which i think is actually underrated right now or a sort of group healing and also disruption and nar is one of the best forms of that and both nar and nidalee fit into both of the parts of the comp so again it's easy to build and it's easy to get the pieces for immediately and keep an eye out for evelyn or elise keep an eye out for elise because she's about to turn into a one cost unit uh, one thing I want to say, too, this is another comp where two two-star Nars is viable to run, mm -hmm. and I've done it multiple times. Having two Nars just tossing tables? Yeah, and it can be crazy. Uh, again, I don't normally in most comps like to run two of the same unit on the battlefield at the same time, but mm -hmm. two Nars, because of the way that Nar and Nidalee overlap, kind of gives you that extra slot where you're still going to get the buffs. Right, and you still get the wild buff as well. Yeah, so I've definitely had uh, success doing that. You know, it's not it's not ideal, but... yeah. You know, I think that's important about all the strong comps is like not just we're not saying this is the best comp when you put it together in the perfect form. I think a lot of the comps on this list are the best comps because when they're not at their perfect, when somebody else is maybe even in the same comp or piece of it with you, you still have a chance to win that game. Yeah. You know, like Yordles. Yordles is super, super strong when you put it together, but it's very fragile in that if somebody else takes a couple of your pieces it's hard to put it together and that wh that's why it's not going to be on our list it's not because the best version of a yordles comp is not very strong it is right and yeah i'm sure if we theory crafted 100 percent versions of each comp sure but some comps you know the yordles, demons. yeah <laughs> demons is just bad except demons 
Even gunslingers is better than demons right now. <laughs> and, and they're trying anyway. to buff demons. <laughs> they're trying to buff everything that's not good. Um, Let's so, talk about some of the weaknesses yeah, of the This one's trip. very, very easy to decide. It's basically, if you can't get your units to ultimate, or if they die before that happens, you are your power level went from, if it was 100, drops to like 60, 50. Yep. Uh, so you have to be able to make sure that happens. So anytime you're getting perma-stunned, not good. Anytime you're not allowed to build mana on the champ or it can't, even if it had a full mana bar and it's stunned, it's not going to do anything. So right. that's one of the big things that really disrupts this comp. Uh, a lot of your units that you're relying on are units people like. So Nidalee, it can be in high demand early. Uh, Nar, for sure, it, these days is pretty tough to get. Yeah. So those can be units that are just hard, that are being fought over by like the entire field. And yeah. That, and that can make it tough. Yeah, burst damage is really good against this as well. Again, like if some if, if you're not immune to magic damage and then Ace will blast your entire line through. Yeah. It's really bad. Again, also transforming, even if you get the full effect when they transform like Nar flips them, but he's at 10 health, it's going to be mitigated a lot. Yep, agree. All right, let's move on to our fourth and final team comp that we're going to talk about today. This is my favorite. Stabby Boys. It is Assassins. Get so, your knives out. Yeah, get your knives out. <laughs> uh, the Assassins. Let's talk about it. Assassins is a buff that they... Well, so first off, this is a different class type. This class type actually changes their general pathing movement. So assassins, if you're an assassin, or if you make an assassin with a spatula... Yeah, that's something I want to talk about. Hold on. Yeah, yeah go ahead. <laughs> they, the assassins leap to the farthest enemy at the start of combat and deal additional critical strike damage. So they kind of do a... What is it can do? A backstab, essentially. Yep. Uh, if you have three assassins on the battlefield, they each do 150% critical strike damage. If you have six assassins, they do 350% critical strike damage. So actually, we're getting into the range of Draven, Blademaster, Imperial buff. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of damage that these guys are putting out, guys and girls. So we have Kha'Zix at one, Pike at two, Zed at two, Rengar and Katarina at three, Evelyn at three, and Akali at four. So there are seven assassins, and none of them are above four. Yes. That's one thing I like. Uh, I, I want to talk about too. the spatula thing really quickly. Right. So spatula is an item that you can pick up from the carousel, or it can drop off a mob. And it, if you get two spatulas, you get an extra person on your team. You can also combine spatula with certain items to turn people into certain classes. Yeah, so I believe it's spatula and BF sword that creates an yes. assassin. Here's the thing I didn't realize the first time I did this is that when you turn a unit into an assassin, it actually gains the thing where it jumps yep. onto their back line. So, like, <laughs> if you accidentally... Too, like, this happened to me because I picked something up in the carousel that had a spatula, but oh, then that made it. me yeah. upgrade it to the next thing, and it was a draven. Uh, so oh, the draven the just started jumping back there. In right into the middle of their stuff. So, yeah, it's not... In fact, there's not a lot of units in the game I think are well suited to becoming assassins that are Cannon. already assassins. Graves, I think, is maybe one, too. Because, Graves is good, yeah. Because it... It does AOE damage. Cannon, maybe, but cannon's squishy, so... Nah, buff him up and then make him an assassin. <laughs> Toss him in there. Sure. He's I a mean, ninja, so he's already half assassin. I want to see... If you've made something very silly into an assassin and it worked on purpose, let us know. I would love to see it. All right, let's talk about the keys to the comp. Um, Pike, who I think... You may disagree with this, but I'm going to make the statement. And they mm -hmm. did just nerf him, and I still think he might be... He's up there. I would actually say Kha'Zix has has gone up in... in an amazingness I believe that Pike is the best early game unit and the unit I want the most off the first carousel. I would say Pike is definitely better than Zed and Kha'Zix. So those are the two and the ones. These I mean, are I'm talking options. about of all the units. Of all the units. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't necessarily disagree, and I would have to... It's interesting because I'm I'm starting to think that now that TF is coming into the twist fate that that may replace Pike just because of his utility. Well, people are definitely going to want to try it out, but oh, I think yeah. I'm actually kind of um, kind of frothing at the mouth because now everyone's going to want Twisted Fate, and that's going to be more Pikes for more me. More Pikes for you. Uh, there, so early game you've got Pike, who if he's not the best early game unit is one of. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get Pike off the carousel. It, then you've got Kazix Zed. As your early game, that's two. That's a one drop and two two drop champs, and that can get you to your three assassins, and they're all pretty good. Mm -hmm. None of them, none of them are bad. And then later on, you've got Katarina, who has tons of damage. If she ults you, you're gonna probably win that fight. And a collie, and a collie just an ult machine if you build her correctly. Now Evelyn and Rengar are lackluster. They're mediocre, but one, any one of them can fill in for yeah. your sixth, and they're they're fine. They're not bad. You know, I'd put them as better than Lissandra, basically. Yeah, I would agree with that. And you have seven, so you do get to choose one that you don't have to play. Yeah. Um, now, one of the most important parts about this composition and making it work is positioning. Normally, you're, you're stacking everyone into a corner with your hyper carries in the back and the big buff guys in the front. However, in this case, you are oftentimes spreading across the entire back line, and you're positioning each of them because they are again going to jump to the farthest enemy. 
And you don't want them to get grouped up and caught, but you do want them to all to jump on specific key targets. So positioning is actually very, very important here. And I'm not very good at this part of the game. Yeah, I think this comp is the most important for just understanding positioning and how it works. And you also, which of your assassins is going to jump to where? You yeah. you often like are like, well, I don't want my, want my Katarina to die, so I need to put it here so that it jumps to this part of the map so that's a safer spot. Mm -hmm. Then like these other assassins, they might die because of where they're going to have to jump to. But they're going to jump no matter what, yeah. so you do have to account put that into, all into account. And it also means you've got to be paying attention to the, the unit positioning of all of your opponents. Mm -hmm. And as the game progresses, you're saying like, okay, now we're down to three players and two of them are laying out there they're deploying in this manner which means that i'm got a two-thirds chance of getting maxed against one of them and so i'm gonna lay out my units in a different way and i even find myself putting assassins like on the front line up top because <laughs> people will start flip-flopping they know your assassin comps out there too oh, so they'll, go so the they'll start way. putting their ash in their front line because you're gonna jump to their back line and so you counter that by putting your katarina in your very front line so because an assassin will not jump if it starts right next to an enemy unit it'll just start attacking the unit right yeah. there and so you can kind of get uh, you can kind of rock, paper, scissors them, right? They move here, you move there. There is a lot of like, positioning counterplay with this as well. Um, and also, I would say getting level threes is a key to making this really, really work in the end game. Because if you just have a bunch of level twos, you're going to get out damaged. Uh, yeah, it, it, I, I don't think you need all level threes, but you, you need, need a, a key level three unit. Yeah. So it might be your pike with two spears on it, it might be your Katarina. You, you're unlikely to probably win if all your assassins are just two stars. Yeah, um, yeah. and that's also why in a, in a composition like this, you're going to need a big tank. Uh, usually someone that can draw a, aggro, someone that's going to make all of the damage point in another direction for a long enough time that your assassins can do their thing and get 350% crit damage start taking out people one at a time. You also have to account that assassins will kill someone that's far away from everyone else, and then they're going to need to take time to get from that dead unit to the next one. Yeah. So you're losing a lot of valuable combat time in there as well. So you have to have someone that can help sustain the damage while they do their dance in the back. The tank is super important because the way assassins work is they kind of all go into shadow mode at the start, and the enemy can't even see them and can't target them yeah. and, as they leap. So what happens is if you don't have a unit that the opponent can see, they will just sit there because they don't have anybody to attack. And then they don't spread out. And your assassins just jump in and yeah. they're all right there. What you want is the opponents to be in this long line that's running towards the one unit of yours they can see. Your assassins jump in and just pick them off slowly one by one. And so one big beefy tank is important. to your, It's like old school MMO. You need a puller. You need, yeah. some, you need something that's going to pull the, the mobs towards it. And then your assassins can get in there and wreak havoc. Yep. Um... Assassins have a lot of damage, so you don't need to necessarily build a bunch of damage items on them. Uh, that's something that I think is something that is going to be counterintuitive to most players because people want to say, like, I want them to want to hit someone. I want them to do as much damage as possible. When they're already doing 350% critical strike damage and they can do that on their ultimates as well as their regular attacks, you're going to be able to clear units out regardless of having buffs on them. So I think most importantly, you're going to want things like Phantom Dancer on Assassins because... If your cat, again, can survive to an ultimate, then she's going to she's win, gonna win the, yeah. the game for you. So. I really like the, what's the item called that at the beginning of combat? Zephyr? It, it gives, no, it gives 200 shield to every Oh, Locket of the it. Iron Solari. Because so, yes. a lot of times you can take all your assassins, put them off to the side around the one mm -hmm. assassin, and they all just have 200 more HP, basically, which is kind of a big deal. Zephyr is actually really good. Um, just to toss up one of their units and then you just have less to kill not to mention you can so be so very fast. mobile with where you put your assassins so you can actually very specifically position Pick. one without having to ruin the way that you built your positioning yeah if you don't know how zephyr works actually it's it based on the position of the unit that has the zephyr it will it will Funny. lift up and stun the unit that's equivalent on the enemy side of the battlefield in the same uh, slot yeah, in the same so the mirror image of it essentially yeah and the same positioning and so yeah. you get into these weird things when people know about zephyrs about repositioning your units so that they don't get the key unit but you can if you know where they are and who you're fighting you can be like oh i'm gonna lift up you know their carry their carry for the first five yeah. seconds and then they have no damage for the first five seconds. or i'm gonna lift up their tank and then i'll mm -hmm. kill everything else and by the time the tank comes down to earth there's nothing for it to protect anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and because assassins don't really care as much, like one singular assassin where it is on the battlefield. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. You can put it wherever you want. Um, One thing I want to say is assassins is like you need three assassins and then six assassins for your comp to work. But I almost think of it as I need three assassins and a tank. So I need to be out. So my, my real powerful moment is not when I get to three units on the battlefield. It's when I get to four. Right. So I will often level up 
my use gold to level up my XP to get to four one step before everybody else so that I get my three assassins in my tank right. and I get to win like two fights. And then also from six to seven is another point where a lot of times I'm just like spend 30 gold, get to seven, get my six assassins, uh, assassins out, and then I'm going to I'm gonna free roll people almost no matter what they've got for a couple battles here until they catch up with their comps. It's a very good point. Very, very good point. All right, let's talk about some of the strengths, although we've gone through some of them. Um, yes. They one-shot backline units. They just, the assassins just destroy them. Yeah, especially if they're able to get an ultimate out. And you'll see this early. Just play a Kha'Zix on your team and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Assassins, to me, is in some ways very hard because we're talking about positioning and stuff, but in some ways very easy. It's If you go assassin comp and you have a decent one, and it's not that hard because there's seven of them and you mm -hmm. only need six, I, it's very rare that I play assassins and I'm outside the top three. Now, you don't win every game sometimes somebody puts together a great sorcerer's comp or whatever and but you're always in it it never feels like it just falls apart and you're not in it yeah and you get to have very feel-good moments of katarina ulting which yeah. is <laughs> maybe one of the most satisfying things that can happen in the game <laughs> outside of a big nartos uh yeah seven total assassins allows for more passive full synergy and at the very least you're going to always have a three assassin buff while you build up to seven uh even if you don't hit seven and you don't have all six immediately that's something that i think people also tend to underrated assassins later in the game because they're looking yeah. for their hyper carries, their dravens, and their nars, and those big guys. Um, and it's very hard to position against this. I, I found myself looking at a board and being like, I don't know where each of them is going, why they're going there, I just hope they're putting it randomly. And then oftentimes you'll find that, no, no, they sent this person here because they knew that they would take care of this person. It was a demon that was going to burn this. So it can be very difficult to position correctly. So definitely, if you have a chance, watch some assassin builds online. See what happens and why players put them in the places they do to understand how you can do it and also play against it. I mean, when you're an opponent and somebody else is assassin and there's like four players left, what mm -hmm. are you supposed to do? Because your unit deployment on the, on the battlefield is going to be totally different versus the assassin than the other. Yeah. But you can't change it just because you don't know if you're going to be fighting the assassin comp. So you have to be like, you know, I'm going to maybe just lose to the assassin comp because I don't want to just lose to the other ones. Yeah. Do you have to hedge that or do you have to make your positioning weaker just to try and build, beat this one out of four chance? Who knows? Yeah. So I, I believe that's kind of an advantage assassins have, although it can become a disadvantage once you're down to heads up. It might be a little bit harder to, to get, you know, first place rather than second mm -hmm. because now that they know exactly that i every time now i'm gonna be facing the assassins and i'll totally and you have these crazy things where up until the last second everybody's switching their board trying to like throw the other opponent off yeah which is fun but it might be a slight yeah, weakness to the comp it's also very hard to do i think for newer players yeah. that, that's one of the toughest parts of the game oh yeah so now in the weaknesses talking speaking of zephyr <laughs> it zephyr can be really bad uh, if you're playing the assassins and your opponent has it because if They'll lift up your tank, and now that thing that we don't want to happen happens where at the beginning of the battle... No one moves. None of their guys move because they can't see your assassins and your tank got stunned. And so your assassins jump in... And to their all, front line. And their front line's just standing there waiting like, oh, here they they came to us. Thank you. Oh, and then sweet. they just Yeah, we have pieces. all the health and we have all the damage. So Zephyr's very good against assassins if they're building the sort of one tank thing. Yeah. I've had games where I'm heads up against people and they have a Zephyr and I just have to take out one of my assassins and put in another unit they can see... Ah, I see. Just so that the one doesn't get, like, when the one gets stunned, they still run forward. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing about assassins is that it they are incredibly high at dealing damage, but they are going to get burst down. Uh, and uh, sometimes that five seconds that you get from Zephyr is more than enough to turn the fight because you needed one Karthus to get to his ultimate level faster before yep. he got knocked. So, yeah, it takes the seven to get to full potential. Uh, obviously, this is something that when you're building it, you have to be the one of the only people doing it as well. Uh, I... Actually, I disagree with that. Really? I feel I feel like, um, yeah, I had this string of like, it was like nine or ten games where I was first or second every game, and I was basically forcing assassins, and in five of them, it was assassin versus assassin in the huh. in the la in the heads up. So I think because there's seven assassins, you can two players can be doing it. Now, maybe more than that, you'll be in trouble. Again, well, I'd say, yeah, again, I guess another strength is that there is no five-cost assassin, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, so your money is very free-flowing with this. You're not like holding five yeah drop champions yeah um yeah crowd the, the last weakness we're going to talk about is uh crowd, crowd control. control and burst damage sorcerers if they get the right comp can just drop you because you're pretty squishy it just takes one karthus <clears throat> ult, and then all of a sudden all of your assassins are sitting at 20 percent health and one brand just goes and boots Bing. you all yeah yeah <laughs> uh glacial can be a problem sometimes if they just proc a couple of times i would say that glacial can be a problem for every single yeah, comp we yeah. talked about today so glacial very there's powerful. a little rng because sometimes it doesn't happen mm -hmm. it doesn't proc in which case they'll just die but yeah, yeah it can go either way 
yeah. I, Assassins is my favorite of these builds. Uh, I've had the most success with it, although I like all of them, though. Yeah, and I think they're, they're all, all they're all powerful. And if you can build them again, staying flexible and figuring out which one to build as well. Sometimes you're not going to end in one of these four comps, but you'll still win with a comp because you had a great game leading up to the end game because of a similar comp to this that maybe didn't fully come together, but at least won you a bunch of games. Which of these four is your favorite? I would probably say I like Ranger Glacial a lot. There's mm -hmm. something very satisfying about doing that to someone. It feels very like blue player magic control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're frozen and they're just getting smacked. Yeah, the they're whole time. like they're they're Draven. They're not Draven. They're Ace will sitting at full mana, but it's just sitting there in an ice block the entire time, and your Ash <laughs> is just consuming it out. There's something I don't know. It's it's very trolly, but I like that one. And and look, if I can get Draven and Swain on the same battlefield, then I'm a happy boy. Yeah, Blade Master, uh, Draven. Uh, Imperial is very strong if and you can demon, put it together. Too. You get a little demon buff out there. Oh, gosh. All right. I wanted to mention two other comps that we like, but we're not going to go in depth on. Um, I liked Nobles a lot when I started playing. Yeah. I get it less these days because it's, it's there's only six Nobles, and you need all six for it to be good. When you put it together, it's very, very strong. You just, some games never even see Kale, so you can't do it. Some games you don't even see Garen, Josh. Uh, people love that That's character. Actually, so. As Garen's gotten worse, has... I think the comp's actually gotten a little worse. Though, I agree. I think so too. They've they've nerfed Garen, even though he, he was hard to get when he was better. Now that he's worse, he just doesn't carry you early because it used to be like you just put any three nobles out early and you just you he's just like win Garen those spin rounds. To win, yeah. yeah, but but that doesn't happen anymore. Um, and sorcerers, I think, is also another very strong comp. That one's a bit tougher to build because you have to really balance and juggle how do you build a front line that's strong enough to take the damage, and usually it means stacking things up on your Morgana or Cassidin. Yeah, so. So, but it can be super powerful. There's definitely been sorcerers comps I've run into that yeah. I'm like, I can never beat that. Yeah, like they that just is, wipe you off. Yeah, the they got the planet. nuts. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's gonna do it for our best team comps right now. But it's a giveaway. We promised we were gonna give away some RP. That's right. We are in the new, the the infancy phase of this show, and the feels big, weird. Yeah, I know we're in. <laughs> and the big part about helping these podcasts get out is whether or not they get searched up or get recommended to people in their feeds. And the great way that that happens with the algorithm is that you know if a, a podcast is highly reviewed or rated, it really helps that out and helps us jump to the top of the search. And we want people to learn how to get better at this game because losing sucks. It feels bad. Yeah. So in order to uh, to incentivize some iTunes reviews, we're going to be giving away. $35 in RP. That's 5000 You can buy the 10 egg bundle. You get plus one egg for free. Open up a little legend skin. Look awesome. Or do anything with it. 5000 RP can get you a, you know. You can use it on regular League of Legends, too. Yeah, you can get some of the premium skins. You can get yep. Elementalist Lux for you that much. You can get much. some champs you don't, you don't have. Yeah, exactly. So make sure all you have to do is leave a review on the iTunes store or the podcast app. You should be able to do it through most of your apps. Uh, and then make sure you're following us at TF Tactical on Twitter. We're going to announce the winner at the beginning or end of next week's episode, and then we'll find a way to get that RP straight to your account. And then you're going to have to let us know what you open with it. All right. By the time we talk to you next, Twisted Fate will probably be out. Ranked, ranked will probably be here, right? Ranked will be out. We're going to have to talk about Ranked as well. Yep. Uh, we're glad, though. Please keep tweeting us pictures of your wins as well as your thoughts on the game and the format and what you found to be successful. And, of course, if you agree or disagree with anything that we've said on the show. Oh, yeah. If you've got a team comp that we didn't talk about that you think is the best team comp, I want to hear about it. So yeah. in the comments, uh, if you're finding us on YouTube or tweet at us is probably the best way that we're going to respond. We definitely want to hear about stuff like that. Our editor for the show is Andrew Van Liges. And if you like TFT, you're probably going to like Magic the Gathering as well. So please go check out our other podcast. It's called the Command Zone Podcast. We talk about Commander, a singleton multiplayer format, as well as make a gameplay show called Game Nights. That's Nights with a K in front of it that features four players around the table. Uh, it's very entertaining. Josh is the director on that one. And it is arguably, arguably the best content on YouTube. Wow. Wow. Straight up. That's high praise. I, I would say if you don't play Magic the Gathering... Game Nights, again, Nights with a K, is something to check out. It'll help you understand it in a really easy to, to digest manner. Yeah, that's right. All right, we will see you on the chessboard slash battlefield slash whatever they're calling it and on the next episode. So bye, everyone. See you next time.